Okay, welcome back to creating a cryptocurrency in Python. We're reaching the end here. We just have some web designing to do to implement our transactions and our whole money sending system into the app. So the, the our first step is going to be to create a transaction page where we can send money to another user. So let's define a new method for our transactions page. So we will create an app.root for slash transaction. And then we will have a form on this page to send money. So we will need the methods get and post. And then we also want this page to only be accessed if the user is logged in. So we will add our wrap that we created a couple videos ago. And then we will return a render template for a transaction dot HTML. Now let's create that file here. Transaction dot HTML. And then we want to have a form um, in our transaction page where we can send money to a user and then also have some amount. So let's open up our form file. Oh, and I've created it here, so I'll just remove that for now. So we will create a new form to send money. So we'll call that our send money form. That will take in some parameter form. We will send to some username, which will be a string field of the username. And then let's have some validators just to check the length. Let's do between four and 25, kind of like this one. And then we need some amount, which we'll also do a string field. We will convert it to an, a floating value later. So we'll have some amount and then well, let's have this value between one and 50, which is a lot to send 50 characters of money. <laughs> because it's not, it's not between $1 and $50, it's actually between one character and 50 characters. So 50 characters would be 50 characters long and that would be a ton of money. So I don't think we'll ever need to worry about that. Then let's create a buy form. So we'll take in some parameter of form and this we'll use later to buy money. Um, so we want some amount that's being purchased, which will be some string field of amount. And then let's do between one and 50 again. Cool, so we are done with our forms file probably for a while. Now let's come here and let's create an instance of our form send money in the argument request.form. Now we will get the balance of the user that is logged in. So let's call the get underscore balance and we will take in the argument of the session.get username. Okay, now we can check and see if the form has been loaded. So we will do if request.method is equal to post, then we will have some code to handle that. But right now, let's start our design of our page. So let's take in the parameters balance and form. Now, if we go to our transaction file here, we can start to code this. So let's include our messages. So our includes slash underscore messages dot HTML. And now let's say your current balance is balance. And I'm calling mine shockwave. So I'm going to do the shorthand SHK for shockwave. SHK. Then we can include our render fields for our form. So let's say from includes slash underscore form helpers dot HTML include or import render underscore field.
now let's create our form. So we're going to create a form method is equal to post and action is equal to an empty string. Then let's create a little div for our form group. And then inside of there, we're going to use our render field to load the form.username and our class is form-control. Like so. Now let's just end our div and we'll copy and paste this code here for our amount. So we'll say form.amount. Perfect. Now we just need a submit button. So I'm going to do a little line break here. And we'll just do an input submit class, or sorry, type. And we'll just call this class button primary. We'll use these class notations later for our fancy CSS. And we'll say value equals send. And then we'll end our form. And then I'll just create a button to maybe link over to the dashboard page. So I'll create a button on click. We'll do some JavaScript here. Window.location.href is equal to dashboard slash dashboard. And make sure you have these little quotes here. And that button we'll call dashboard, just so we can have some nice little link to go back to our dashboard. Perfect. Now let's try and load our transactions page. So slash transaction. Cool. And look at that. We're logged in. Our current balance is 80. Oh, and I should probably write your current balance is. So your current balance is 80. Let's make sure that's right too. Access our blockchain. I sent, uh, I, I received 100, then I sent 20. So my balance should be 80. Then here we have a form where we can send money to some user and some amount we could send. And that shouldn't work. And then we also have a link back to our dashboard. Cool. So now inside of this request.method equals post if statement, we can attempt and send the money as requested by the form. Because remember, we created those errors earlier. So if something goes wrong, then we will get an exception. So that's why we're using a try block. So we're going to try and send money from the current user, which is the session.get username. And we'll send it to the username entered in the form. That is our recipient. So form.username.data. And then the amount is the form.amount.data. And then if this works, we can flash money sent. And that will be happy. We'll say success. Now, if we get an error, we will accept that exception as E. And then we'll flash that error to the user. So maybe it's insufficient funds, so it's invalid transaction. We will flash that message. And then regardless, we will redirect to the same page. So we'll redirect a URL for, and that's it. So we can test this now. Let's refresh. And I'm going to try and send an invalid transaction. So I'm going to try and send money to a user that doesn't exist. So let's say John Doe 123, that user does not exist. And I'm going to try and send 20. So we got our, our message user does not exist. And if we check the blockchain, that transaction was not added. So let's try our other errors, which were the user exists. However, the amount is a string and we have an invalid transaction. It was not added to the blockchain. Let's try the user exists, but we're sending a money that is greater or an amount that is greater than what we have. So we have 80, let's send 81 insufficient funds. 
Now let's try and send a negative amount invalid transaction. So everything is working fine. Let's send a real amount now. Let's send 10 to John Doe. Perfect. Money sent. And now we have 70. So let's log out and let's log into John Doe and see what John Doe's balance is right now. So John Doe has password John. And if we go to transaction, John Doe has 30. Let's see if that's right. Let's access our blockchain. See our new block was added. John Doe was sent 20 and then John Doe was sent 10. So John Doe should have 30. So this is working perfectly right now. Now we can just create a uh, page to buy money. So let's do that. Let's uh, create our app.root forward slash buy. That will also have a form that we defined earlier. So we'll use the methods get and post. We'll make sure that the user is logged in to access this method. Then we'll access our buy form, create an instance of it with the argument request.form. We will get the user's current balance again, like so. We will check if the form has been submitted. We will attempt to send money from the bank. So we'll copy this data actually here. So if they submitted money, we're going to send money from the bank to the actual user itself. And that will be the form dot amount. And then we'll say maybe like purchase successful and then we'll just leave the same exception here and we'll return a redirect to the buy page or actually let's redirect to the dashboard then we can just return our render template which should be the same as this except we'll go to buy instead of transaction And that is our buy method. Now we actually have to create our buy.html file. And we will do that in the next video. So I'll see you then.